My grandfather invented the principle of the pressurized cabin and was the first man to climb in the stratosphere and by the way to see the curvature of the earth with his own eyes. And then he adapted his principle of the stratospheric balloon to submarines, inventing the Batiscafe, which allowed my father and Don Walsh from the US Navy to dive together to the deepest point in the ocean, seven miles down in the Marinas Trench. When people ask me if it would be possible to transport 200 passengers on solar power, I always answer, it would be crazy to say yes and stupid to say no. My name is Bertrand Picard. I'm a medical doctor. I achieved the first flight around the world by balloon and uh, initiated the Solar Impulse project. Solar Impulse, I believe, is the first big adventure of the 21st century. It's not about conquest of the planet. It's about harmonizing with nature with absolutely no fossil energy. Just using the energy of the sun to run the electrical engines, to load the batteries, to fly through the night and to reach almost a perpetual way of flying with no fossil energy. I believe our world is obsessed by short-term vision. We are taking absolutely crazy decisions. The only explanation is to say that human beings are basically afraid of the unknown. What we want to show with Solar Impulse is that they are positive and optimistic solutions that are profitable. They protect the environment, but at the same time, they also create jobs and help the economical growth. So if we want to go into the future, we have to do it like with Solar Impulse, with this type of technologies, and I would say also this type of pioneering spirit. My involvement started in uh, 2003 when Bertrand told about his idea to the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology and they asked me if I would be interested to set up a team to conduct a feasibility study on these questions. We often talk about the Wright brothers and interestingly is that it took from the first Wright brother flight in 1903, it took 25 years for Lindbergh to be able to cross the Atlantic. He crossed alone, it took another 25 years for us to develop an airplane which had the capability to transport 100 passengers non-stop. So we'll be in the same situation today. Eh? We can make it now and we hope to make it around the world with one person on board. It will take more time of course for new technologies to develop and allow passengers to fly without any CO2, without any pollution. All the role models I had my grandfather, my father, but also a lot of astronauts I met during the Apollo space program. This has inspired me to have an interesting and useful life, to push the frontiers of the impossible much further. And when I had this possibility of initiating a project to fly around the world non-stop in a balloon, I thought, well, that is just what I love. This is just in the line of all the role models I had before, so let's try. And after three attempts, it worked. Suddenly, I had fame, I have financial means, and uh, I started to be able to have an influence around me. And uh, I thought, if now I initiate a project like Solar Impulse, I thought this is a tool that will be able to fulfill all the models, all the examples, and all the dreams I had when I was a child. We really set the goal the most difficult we could just because we thought it was the best way to draw the attention to the potential of these new technologies. 
Our goal was to fly solar day and night. So for this you need a much lighter structure than anything that had been built on an airplane. Proportionally, our structure is 10 times lighter per square meter than the best uh, glider in the world. Well, the big problem was to find a concept for an airplane of the size of an Airbus, the weight of a mid-sized car, which could fly with the power of a scooter. So that was the biggest main challenge at the beginning. To be able to fly through the night, we needed an airplane which is much more efficient from what has been designed and built until now. Efficient in terms of uh, how much energy it could collect, but more important, the way it would use the energy collected. So the first things we did is to have an airplane aerodynamically efficient, and that's what explains its size. So a bigger wingspan, the smaller the energy consumption. And the second, of course, is to make all the system extremely well conceived, the motors efficient, so little loss. And the third uh, way, in fact, to, to be able to make it is to have a very light airplane. Because of the size of the airplane, everything happens in a slow motion and it's a low weight. Everything is uh, damped by the air around the airplane. So when uh, we do a turn, the wing goes down extremely slowly and the airplane starts to make its turn, so we have to get used to that. The solar cells are on the wings. It collects uh, the sun rays. It transforms sun rays into electricity. And the electricity goes then uh, to the electric motors, which makes the propeller turn and also goes to the batteries to fill them so that we have enough energy for the uh, flight through the night. And we can adjust how much energy we want to have in the motor, how much energy should go to the batteries, so that's something which can be, of course, recommended by the, by the pilot from the cockpit. During the night flight, if the technologies are not optimized, if we cannot save a lot of energy, if the pilot wastes his battery energy by flying unstable, the plane will not make it through the night and will crash before sunrise. And in our world, in our society, if we are not able to think and act sustainably, to have renewable energies, to optimize our technologies, to put this clean tech on the market, we will never give the planet to the next generation without a major disaster. Professor Picard, the Belgian scientist, has ascended the heights never before reached by man to study the stratosphere, that unknown region which surrounds the Earth at a distance of more than seven miles. Last year in May, he reached over nine miles in height, but this time he was out to beat his own record. And one of the things it will definitely do will be to enable better weather forecasts to be made. And won't that be a boon when we're picking out our holidays?